Dr. Shannon, take it away. Woo good evening, ladies. It's so good to see you all here. Um, I'm really looking forward to having some good discussions tonight. Um, we'll jump right in and I'll briefly introduce myself in a moment and we'll do a few poll questions to see where you're at now. Um, then we're gonna talk about leave no trace principles um, and environmentally conscious practices, which honestly I believe is at the heart of any conversation we're having about hygiene in the backcountry. Um, then we're gonna dive into what goes into a feminine hygiene kit, um, how to use the gear and all of the best practice with, practices within that. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, I know you're all really stoked about talking about poop and pee and periods. It's gonna be a great evening. So uh, then we'll go ahead and do a poll again, which is gonna help me sort of gauge just how the presentation uh, was received uh, for future presentations. And then if you have any questions along the way, please just like type it right into the chat box. So you don't have to wait till the end or anything like that. Um, I definitely like a more interactive experience. So without further ado, let's see, there we go. Uh, hello, I'm Shannon Kelleher. Um, I am the owner of Alpine Sisters. Uh, Alpine Sisters is a small online outdoor store that I created for women specifically. Um, for over a decade, I always wanted to open up my own outdoor store, but it wasn't until late 2020 when, you know, pandemia was at its height and I had a lot of time to think about things. Uh, that I had this idea suddenly about making curated gear collections for women. Um, I had recently had my daughter at that point, and I wanted to kind of create a more inclusive space for her to explore the outdoors. And it was actually the feminine hygiene kit that kind of kickstarted everything um, as I thought about, you know, the challenges that I had personally faced uh, while having my period in the backcountry and the lack of education out there when I was younger, especially, gosh, in those early years, I was predominantly backpacking with men. So they were not helpful with that. Um, <laughs> and also there just wasn't information out there from outdoor community members um, about how to manage it. So tonight I'm going to share with you what I've learned over the past 15 years um, so that maybe I can help spare you some of the trial and error that I went through myself. Or if you are already you know, an expert in backpacking and have had your period multiple times, um, I would love for you to chime in and give some, um, some feedback about your experiences and maybe even learn some new strategies that you haven't tried before. So. Uh, full disclaimer though, not every method discussed tonight is going to be what is best for your needs. You know your body best. So listen to that. Um, when we're creating this whole presentation, I really tried to be mindful of different people's comfort levels um, and the best practices to keep our wild spaces safe. So, you know, I recognize the material that I present tonight may not include every possible method and that's okay. Uh, if you have a strategy that you use and love that isn't included, again, please share in the comments. I Last time we did this, um, last month, I learned a lot from a lot of new strategies from other women, so it was really fun. Um, I see this as like an opportunity for all of us to uh, learn tonight. All right, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the polls. Um, this is gonna, again, kind of help me see where you're at now and uh, where things go throughout the evening, so. This first question is, I feel confident in how to use my gear for backcountry hygiene. One, definitely I've done it many times and feel extremely comfortable. Two, I've used my gear a few times, but I'm still learning good systems for myself. Or three, I've never done feminine hygiene in the backcountry yet, and I'm excited to learn some new tricks. Okay, so I think most people have answered. Is everybody, we're gonna have you, give you two more seconds. So I'm gonna end the poll here. Thank you. Okay. Um, and we'll share results. All right. So it looks like we've have quite, that's mostly people who either haven't done it yet or are trying to learn some new strategies. That's awesome. Okay. Um, number two, I have backpacked while having my period. Um, one, yes, and I have a good system that works for me. Two, yes, 
but I'm open to learning new methods that might be a better fit for me. Um, three, I've backpacked, uh, I've backpacked, but never on my period. And four, I've never backpacked before. Okay, I think we'll wrap that poll up then. And here are the results. Okay, first of all, to the, those ladies who haven't backpacked before, welcome to the world. I uh, hope you get an opportunity to soon. Um, for those of you who haven't done it on your period before, I maybe we can have a conversation later tonight and see if it was intentional or if it was just kind of by luck. Um, and for those of you who have done it before, I'll be also curious to hear like what, what wasn't working for you um, and see if some of the things that we talk about are helpful at all. All right, last question. Uh, what kind of menstruation management do you use or plan to use in the backcountry if you haven't been before? Uh, tampons and pads, menstrual cup or disc, period underwear, birth controls, you don't have to have a period or something else. Okay, uh, we'll wrap this one up. All right, okay. Lots and lots of people are using tampons and pads. Interesting. Sorry, I'm just taking a picture of this because I'm very curious. Um, a few people with uh, menstrual cups or discs, birth control a little bit. Oh, I'm curious what the other one. Oh, maybe you don't have a period. Um, that's possible or something else. I'm very curious now though. Um, thank you for that. Uh, we have one more question, but this one's going to be a little bit more interactive on your part. So I don't know if you guys have ever done a whiteboard before, but let me, well done. Here we go. Okay. So when, <laughs> when you, where is it? Okay. So what is the first thing that you think of when you hear backpacking on your period? Unfiltered. You can Use this little writing tool. There's a text box here you can type and um, put it in, but I'm very curious what backpacking on your period kind of initially. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, fabric pads. Oh, Brandy, I'm really curious about fabric pads now. I want to talk to you about that. That's really interesting. Does that say? <laughs> oh, yeah, that says something. I'm not sure what that says. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't read that one. How to keep myself fresh? Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is. You can also put it in the chat if that works easier for you. <laughs> I think a lot of times I hear people, messy, yes. Okay, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Molly and Alyssa, okay. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of concern about how to stay clean, how to, oh, increased bear attraction, interesting, okay. Jealous of my partner who <laughs> doesn't menstruate. <laughs> uh, plus it's a minus of menstruation, right? <laughs> Okay, annoying, yeah. Bears, lots of bear fear. Okay, interesting. Okay, well, thank you for um, sharing that with me. I have fabric pads made out of flannel and are washable, they help with the cup. <gasps> Brandy, if you have a, um, if you have like the link to something uh, for those fabric pads, I would love to see it because that would be really, really interesting and something I can incorporate for the future. That's awesome, thank you. I'm uh, glad we don't invite guys who don't understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, even the best intended men um, really don't get it, bless their hearts. All right, <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. This is definitely a space tonight where we're going to 
be very open and honest. And I grew up in a family that had like zero boundaries when it came to all things bodily function. So, so welcome to my world. Um, <laughs> so we're going to switch gears a little bit and um, just quickly talk about leave, leave no trace principles. Um, Cause again, it, it, they're at the core of why we do everything, um, all of our practices for backcountry hygiene. All right. So for those who are unfamiliar and haven't heard it, I know that's like a buzzword, but it, people might kind of know what leave no traces, but maybe don't know exactly what the principles are. Um, but there are a set of outdoor ethics that help protect our wild spaces and allow us and others who come after us um, to enjoy the outdoors. Uh, all of the principles are listed on this slide, uh, but for the sake of our conversation about feminine hygiene, we're just going to focus on a few. So the first one being plan ahead and prepare. You want to anticipate your needs before heading out <laughs> into the backcountry and make sure that not only do you have the right gear to leave the least amount of impact in the environment, but you actually want to know how to use all, all that gear ahead of time. Um, I always use a trip list so that I don't forget to pack anything. Um, I know other people have different methods, but I also have created um, a feminine hygiene trip list specifically that's included um, at the end of this presentation with resources. Uh, one thing to know, even if you're not supposed to have your period and you're still menstruating, always, always, always pack your period gear. Even if you just had your period a few days ago or you're normally like regular to the day, um, just always pack it. Sometimes the physical exertion of backpacking can change your cycle. So it might come early or even later than expected. Um, so we'll talk more about this uh, when we talk about gear specifics. Um, the other leave no trace principle I really wanna highlight is uh, dispose of waste properly. Whatever you pack in must be packed out. Uh, I know when it comes to period management, this is kind of the biggest pain in the butt, um, but you know, it doesn't just include wrappers from food, it, it's the tampons and pads if you're using them. And we'll go a lot more into this later. And actually, Outdoor Magazine, I think it was, just came out with an article recently about suggestions of <laughs> what poop management should look like, um, how it's changing. And we can talk a little bit about that too. So another leave no trace principle I really wanna emphasize is respecting wildlife. We think a lot about storing food pro properly. I know some people were thinking about bears, but you know, there's other things like um, freaking raccoons. I swear to God, they have like <laughs> destroyed so many of my camps. Um, <laughs> but we really want to think about storing our tampons and pads as well, the ones that are used. And also toothpaste, soap, any item that may have a scent to it. Um, we're going to want to properly store those as well because it can potentially harm the animals, um, not just you know, by consuming it, but also if they become too familiar with humans, then um, sometimes they end up having to be put down or relocated, which is a huge bummer. So make sure you're using those designated bear poles and lockers if they're out there, um, or bear canisters, which is typically what most people need to use. Um, I've also read recently that bear sacks are kind of like, probably not a good idea anymore. It sounds like a lot of bears are learning how to <laughs> shimmy across even the most well laid um, sack hangs. But uh, finally, just a reminder to be considerate of others. Many of us go out backpacking to enjoy the pristine nature and like really nothing ruins a view like, like seeing someone else's poop or toilet paper or something else gross like that. Um, so just think about what you would not wanna see and make sure it's covered up yourself. All right. Um, so the feminine hygiene kit, um, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about some of the essentials and the options you have to create your unique uh, backcountry feminine hygiene kit. But first, a note on traditional versus reusable gear. First and foremost, get the gear that works for you with, you know, with regards to cost. Um, I get it. I, when I started backpacking, I was a college student. And after that, I was an AmeriCorps volunteer making $4 an hour. So like, <laughs> You know, backpacking is a huge financial investment and it can be really stressful. And um, while I normally encourage buying used gear, most feminine hygiene products obviously can't be bought used um, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, I will, however, note that traditional gear, um, so non reusable gear, tends to only be used one time and is more expensive long term. So even if you think you're going to backpack, 
more than once um, if you haven't done so yet. I personally think it's worth the financial investment to get reusable gear. Um, it's also not as bulky um, in your pack, but uh, yeah, just a little food for thought on that. Okay, so this is an example of uh, a feminine hygiene kit. First and foremost, you need a bag of any kind to kind of carry everything. Um, you can use a Ziploc bag. I personally really like my Stasher Go bag. Um, it clips right onto the outside of my pack. So if I'm, you know, kind of tight on space, I don't have to worry about fitting something else into my pack. It's just right there. Oh gosh, I just saw, sorry. Um, Brandy, thank you for sharing this. That's amazing. Oh, that's great. Brandy just shared. Um, some tutorials. I just use my own. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brandy. Sorry, I digress. Um, <laughs> so you've got options, Ziploc bags, stash or go bags. You can use a dry sack. I would recommend using something that it is going to keep your stuff dry. Um, so I would avoid like cotton bags and things like that. Uh, you're also going to need a backcountry trowel. This is to dig your cat holes with, which we're gonna talk about more in just a moment. Um, yes, you absolutely can use rocks and sticks, uh, but I know personally, I really struggle to like dig deep enough with those because um, you need to be six to eight inches deep and like <laughs> going at it in kind of difficult terrain with a stick is sometimes like a futile effort. So I personally think it's really worth getting something, um, some lightweight backcountry trowel they're not terribly expensive. Um, and again, you can just use them endlessly. You can even use them in your garden. Um, I had my daughter do that recently. <laughs> it's kind of more her size. Uh, one of the most important items in your feminine hygiene kit is going to be your soap and hand sanitizer if you want it. I say this because it's so, so important, not only for your health, but also your safety, to make sure that you're not introducing harmful bacteria or viruses into your body. Um, so whether you're on your period and handling things down there, or even just before you eat um, or deal with like your eyes, if you have contacts or glasses, um, I really, really encourage you to only buy biodegradable soap when you're going into the back country. Um, that being because we want to make sure that we're leaving the least amount of impact um, so some soaps have really harsh chemicals and we don't really want to affect those sometimes sensitive biomes. Um, so something like Dr. Bronner's or, um, that's like the most popular one. Uh, they have like camp sets and things like that. Uh, but those tend to be more, uh, sustainable or I personally have recently gotten into using, uh, bar soap and then wrapping it with beeswax. Um, so you have lots of different options. But again, try to stick with biodegradable. Uh, all right, get ready, because we are gonna spend a lot of time talking about poop in the next few slides. Ooh. All right, it might sound silly, but talking about where we poop is probably one of the most important things when it comes to backcountry hygiene. Um, it helps minimize the spread of disease for other visitors and for other animals in that environment. Um, and it also uh, helps maximize the decomposition of your waste to ensure that our wild spaces, again, are staying healthy and clean. So whenever possible, the best place to poop is a toilet or outhouse. I have been backpacking in a very few places where they've actually had outhouses, but it was really cool when they did. Um, it's just, you know, if that's an option, please use it. If no outhouse is available though, which, realistically, it probably, probably won't, uh, you have two options. One, you can either dig a cat hole and bury it, or two, and sometimes you will actually have to do this, um, you can pack it out. And uh, that was kind of what I was talking about before with that new Outdoor Magazine article. They're suggesting that everybody always pack out their waste. Um, <laughs> Lily loves a good outhouse. I know, Lily. I, <laughs> I, wish, I wish they all had outhouses. That would be so nice. Um, Okay, so to, to take your cat hole, you're gonna walk 200 feet, which is approximately 70 big steps. So just remember 70. You're gonna do it away from any water sources, campsites, or trails. And remember, this is to try to prevent the spread of disease to others. So try to avoid spots where water might go during runoff. 
uh, because that's just going to erode that soil quickly and, and before your poop has the opportunity to um, decompose. Uh, sunny areas are a plus. Um, that'll help decompose your waste faster. The dream spot would be somewhere where it has really rich soil near a downed log and on a hill. Um, that's where you're gonna have all those good microorganisms um, living, on, living on your crap. Uh, once you find your spot, you're gonna dig a hole six to eight inches deep, four to six inches in diameter. That's again, where most of those microorganisms hang out um, and it'll help everything decompose faster. So next, you're gonna poop. When people ask me, how they should prepare for backpacking. I'm not kidding. The, the one thing I always suggest is to develop a good squat regimen um, for this purpose. <laughs> um, it might take a little getting used to uh, with your balance and aim, but with some practice, you'll get the hang of it. Um, you're welcome to use a tree to support you too. Uh, does anyone ha have other clever, clever methods that they use for pooping? Okay. Uh, next, you're going to wipe, and we'll talk about the different methods in just a moment. But if you're using toilet paper, please, please, please throw your toilet paper into the hole completely with your poop. Um, squat and lean forward. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, Lily. <laughs> um, so before I switch to using a bidet, I would use a stick to pack down my toilet paper and make sure that like it's completely down in that six to eight inch range. So like I have seen some cat holes before where like the poop is down there, but then the toilet paper is like right on the surface or like maybe an inch under and like that's not gonna decompose the toilet paper. So please, please, please make sure it's like all the way down. Rocks to elevate the squat, yes. <laughs> Wait, like, like, <laughs> Like, do you put your foot kind of on the rock? Now I'm now I'm trying to envision this. I need like graph, like a, a picture. Yes, okay. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. I like that. That's a really good idea. Um, <laughs> so once your poop, and if you've chosen to use uh, toilet paper, uh, those are in the hole, you're gonna cover your hole with soil. And again, your poop trail should never actually touch your poop, just soil. So like having it on the outside of your backpack is like not a gross thing because it's only touched soil. Oh, Amy says, yes, two rocks, one for each foot. <laughs> That's fantastic. What happens when like, they're uneven rocks? Is that kind of a challenge? <laughs> oh gosh, that's really funny. I'm gonna try that next time. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, quick pro tip. So when you set up your camp, one of the first things I like to do is to start just digging cat holes <laughs> um, or even just like one long latrine. So I, like six to eight inches down and just like two feet wide. Um, that way, if you have to go at night or even in the morning, like really urgently, um, you're not spending all that time digging first. Like when you gotta go, you gotta go. No one wants to like dig. So set up camp, make your poop hole. Uh, all right, so there are four main methods to clean your poopy butt. We have first the bidet, um, which has been really fun to have this conversation with people more and more lately. Um, it's This is the bidet that I use, the Happy Bottom. Uh, it's a re You can also use a reusable peri bottle. Um, there's lots of different kinds of bidets too. There's some that like just twist onto any water bottle. Um, and you can just point and squeeze. Uh, but you simply just fill your bidet with water. Uh, I like to filter the water first when I'm in the backcountry, if possible, if it's you know a, a readily available resource. Um, and then just point at your butt and ta-da, your butt's nice and clean. If it's good enough for, for the French, it's good enough for me. Um, let's see, okay, here is, Hold on, I have a video real quick for how to use this sucker.
it's, I think it's when people initially hear that, they're like, oh, that's gross. But honestly, when you get down to it, you're not touching your butt. Like it's kind of way less disgusting than toilet paper where you have to touch your butt. So um, I think it's a more hygienic way when you are in the back country. Um, let me see if I can get this, sorry. Trying to, oh, where did my present button go? There it is, okay. Um, so yeah, that's the bidet. Your next option again is to use toilet paper. This is becoming more and more of a controversial controversial topic. Um, some people believe that you should always pack it out. There's been some recent studies saying that like bacteria from your poop is still being found for up to a year in those areas and then like spreading to that environment. I Again, that seems like it's pretty new information. I think they have a lot more to study on that, but my personal thoughts are if, you know, toilet paper is water soluble. So if you, again, pack it down into that six to eight inch depth, it should decompose. Um, I have a couple of questions here, Charlie. Doesn't that leave you with a wet butt? <laughs> yes, it does for a very short amount of time. <laughs> um, it's just like, honestly, it, it dries off so quickly. I don't even really think about it or like, you just kind of drip, do a little booty dance and it, it dries pretty quick. I was gonna ask that too, don't you still have to wipe? <laughs> it just air dries real, really and truly. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting, like, cause you're not, you're not dousing your whole butt. It's just your butt hole, right? So it's not like a large area. Um, again, when I was talking about leave no trace practices and like how to plan ahead and prepare, if you use a bidet practice, practice in your <laughs> in your house first so that you get a um a good method down um that is what I was thinking how do you drink your body <laughs> that's so funny no one mentioned that in the last class that's really interesting I want to have even thought about that um yeah no just, just do a little wiggle aim aim effectively <laughs> um so yeah uh let's see Leaves and rocks. I, I have met maybe five people in my life who use this method, but you can absolutely do it. Um, if you choose this method, please, please, please know what poisonous plants look like. Um, you don't need poison ivy, but um, that would just not be a good time. So I personally am over 30 years old and I've been camping and outdoors for over 30 years. And I for whatever reason, have a mental block when it comes to identifying buying poisonous plants. So like, it's not an option for me and that's, I've accepted that. Um, but, but if you're really into lightening your pack or just kind of using whatever is available, then that is totally an option. Do make sure that, that you're, if you're wiping with that, it goes into your cat hole. Um, just because it's nature, it's still got your poop on it. So put that into your cat hole. Uh -huh. The last, last option, which again is becoming more popular, is to pack it out. There are some environments where you actually have to pack it out. Um, so like alpine winter environments, rivers and canyons, oceans and lakes, big walls, like a, if you're rock climbing, um, and also like really busy trails. Um, that's when blue bags and wag bags come into play. So you use a blue bag like you would use a dog poop bag, just kind of invert it, pick up your poop, and then I know a lot of people like to put that poop into a very well sealed bag. Um, and then there are also wag bags, excuse me. Uh, here we go, here is a wag bag. Some places where it's best to pack out your waste include alpine and winter environments, go. rivers and canyons, oceans and lakes, big walls, and even really popular trails. Always check local regulations. Start by opening the double bag system. They generally come with just enough TP to get your fingers dirty, so pack some extra. <laughs> These magic crystals inside gel your waist and render it inert. Might need to make yourself a throne with rocks or logs for comfort and to anchor the bag. Now squat and get her done. Once you're done with your business, you can just deposit the toilet paper right in the bag. Go ahead and roll that up nice and tight. Oh, getting all that air out of there and seal it up. Done. Make sure you pack it out by hiding it in your friend's pack. 
Just don't forget about it like you usually do with your banana peels. Then properly dispose of it in a trash can. And don't forget to wash your hands. So if you're using wag bags, if you have to, or if you're just choosing to use it um, to be, to completely remove your poop from the environment, um, I would bring more than you think you need. <laughs> um, again, because sometimes when we are backpacking, our bodies just react differently to all the exertion. Um, I know some people who poop less. I know some people who poop a ton more. So come plan and prepared. Um, so bring extra wag bags if you're gonna do that. Again, this conversation is now the, um, this conversation is in the outdoor community has been spurred by more people getting outdoors in the last few years where they think that everyone should be doing it now. Um, again, up to you to make that decision, um, what you feel like is best for you and, and best for the environment. But um, I personally think cat holes will be okay for now. Um, okay, let's see here. Next up, we're gonna talk about peeing. Um, just like when you poop, please walk 200 feet away from any trails, water sources, or campsites, um, which people often don't do when they pee. They do it for pooping, but not for peeing. So remember, it's still bacteria that can impact um, waterways in particular. So you don't have to dig uh, any tips for us people with Crohn's disease. Oh, it is so hard to hold it. Yeah, like when it hits, it hits and it's, you know, that's a good question. So if you have a hard time with something like that and it, it's just gonna come, I would probably use a wag bag. Um, that way you can just have that on the outside of your pack, grab it really quickly and just go. Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, being 200 feet away from anything or, <laughs> you know, like, because you're not going to be leaving it there. Um, so that would be my suggestion. Does anybody else have any suggestions? Uh, also, suck. Uh, sorry you have to deal with that, it sucks. Okay. Hopefully, oh yeah. Hopefully uh, we can come up with some more, more ideas. I'll think about that one. Um, so, Unless you are going to be using toilet paper, you don't have to dig a cat hole when you pee. If you are going to use toilet paper, you have to dig a cat hole, um, but we'll talk about that in a second. So for, again, four options for this. Uh, the first is my personal favorite um, is using a pee rag. Um, I have a cool cloth and it's like probably the best invention ever that hit the outdoor industry. Um, <laughs> It's an antimicrobial pee cloth. Um, and I have to say the first time I ever heard about it, I was like, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. Um, why would I reuse something that I pee with? Um, but I'm a huge believer in trying things once at least. So I tried it and like, it's super rad. Like it comes with me everywhere. It comes with me when I'm out in town. Uh, Cause you never know when Places aren't going to have toilet paper. I love my pool. Yay, Molly. Yes. <laughs> um, so when with a cool cloth, what I really love about it, so there's a waterproof design. I don't actually have mine here with me, probably because it's downstairs where I used it last. Um, but there's a waterproof side. It's usually the really pretty side. Um, and you hold it with that side, and then you use the black side to wipe from not from front to back like you normally would, you do it from back to front, just don't wipe your butthole. Um, the reason being for that is when you are wiping from front to back, eventually you would wipe your butthole and like big no, no, you don't want poop on your uh, pee cloth since you're gonna be reusing it. So when you're done, you can just hang it on your pack to dry out and these UVs ray, UV rays will sanitize it. It's insanely cool. Uh, you can also snap it closed um, if it's dried and you prefer a little privacy or let it wave like I do, <laughs> uh, your choice. Mon, is it Mon Monique? Uh, Monique says, we have used J clothes for years. No problem. Rinse after use. I don't know that one. I'm going to have to look into that one too. J clothes. 
Is it kind of like a antimicrobial pea cloth too of some sort? Interesting. There's there's so many different brands out there now. It's really there's lots of options. It's exciting. Um, so once or twice a day, you can wash it with a small amount of water um, and soap, and you just rub it like this, and then let it dry out. It's great because you can use it even when you're having your period, which a lot of people don't think about, um, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So instead of an antimicrobial pea cloth, you can also use a bandana. Uh, Monique says, no, they are thin cleaning cloths that have been around for years. Dry very quickly. Huh, interesting. Um, do you find that the odor is pretty minimal with those? That's really cool. All these things that exist out there and you don't know about it until you know about it. J Cloth is a brand, no odor. Awesome, very cool. Thank you for sharing that. I'm gonna have to give that a try. Um, the next option you have is to just shake it off. <laughs> um, if you're prone to UTIs or you find it really uncomfortable, like I do, like I just don't like being moist in my underwear, um, you, another method might be a better fit for you, but I know some people who like can really shake it off well and like nothing's left. So if that's an option for you, go for it, please. Um, the next option is, again, use the traditional toilet paper. Um, again, stick it in that six to eight inch cat hole every time you pee. Pain in the butt, I know, I know. Um, and then in the last three options, you would pull down your pants, squat, but if that option doesn't suit you for any number of reasons, um, like you have a hard time squatting or feel really uncomfortable exposing yourself on a trail or something like that, um, there are feminine urinary devices or pee funnels on the market, which allow you to pee while you're standing up. Uh, so you just put the funnel in your pants and go, well, you're right there, uh, just like, like a man would. Um, I would note that it takes a, up a bit of room in your bag, um, unless you can find a way to like attach, attach it to the outside. Uh, but, and it can be kind of hard to clean, but I know some women who like love this option. The last class like had so many people who, <laughs> who used them, they really were excited. Um, this has been kind of like a lot of information about pee, pee and poop. Any questions right now? Okay. I'll come back if I see anything in the chat, but we'll move on. I think this is probably why most people are here. We're going to talk about menstruation. Um, a reminder again, even if you don't think you're going to have your period, bring your supplies no matter what. Um, I can't tell you how many times in my cycle has deviated from its usual course while I've been backpacking. Um, so it's better just to be prepared than to have to come up with a plan while you're like miles into the wilderness and like, I don't even, gosh, I don't even know what you do. Maybe get like leaves. I, that would be really interesting actually. Um, so just like you would um, when you poop, when you have your period, you're going, going to walk 200 feet away from trails, water sources and campsites and start digging that six to eight inch, four to six inch wide um, cat hole. And once you've done, uh, dug your cat hole, wash your hands. I think it's better to wash with soap and water instead of using just hand sanitizer when you're sticking your fingers anywhere near your vagina or in it um, because it removes the debris, not just the germs. Um, so we'll look at the four main options you can use to manage your period to determine the next step. So first, we have menstrual cups. Um, they're a fantastic reusable option that's really lightweight um, and so easy to pack. Here's, here's mine. I mean, this is, it's so small. It's pretty cool. Um, other benefits, they're lightweight. They can be worn for up to 12 hours at a time, uh, which reduces the need to like do this whole process. Um, I'm gonna be talking specifically about the Diva Cup today, just because that's the one I'm familiar with, but I know there's like, <laughs> I've seen at least two dozen different brands in the market. Um, and I'm curious if any of you have had that in the poll earlier, some of you had said you use um, discs. I'm curious what brands you use and if you love them or not. Um, but anyway, so 
after you dug your cat hole and washed your hands, you're going to remove your cup and then pour the blood into your cat hole. Then wipe with your pee rag or your toilet paper. And if you use the cool cloth, you can, again, use the little soap and water um, to wash your pee rag really easily. So don't worry about using it on your period. Um, if you use toilet paper, again, remember to bury it properly. Uh, let's see, I see. Oh yeah, Diva Cup, never going back from menstrual cups. <laughs> I couldn't agree more, Alyssa. Um, I use June, love my, I've heard really good things about June. Again, I'm that weirdo who likes to try everything. I should probably try the June at some point. Um, oh, another one. Do you menstrual, oh, sorry, the chat just went down on me. Uh, do menstrual cups leak when you were lying down sleeping? No, and that's like, actually why I started using them um, because I was having problems with that. Um, it's, it creates like a suction. And so it should create no leakage. I've heard that menstrual discs can cause leakage, but I have not heard that about menstrual cups. That's kind of the, the ingenious design in them. Uh, do people find that cups are usable when they have heavy menstrual cycles? Yes. I have a hard time thinking that I can make that transition, although I would really love to. Very cool. Um, so what's really interesting is like, when you think of a period, it, it seems really bloody, right? Like, especially when you're changing pads or tampons like every few hours. Um, when you're using a cup, you realize that there actually isn't as much blood um, as you think, because, what was it? Someone was telling me it was like the capillaries uh, I'm sorry, I forget this. Um, something about the way the cup collects it versus having it just kind of like come out naturally. Um, it just looks messier and more than it actually is. Like I have an extremely heavy flow um, and I have never filled up my cup. Um, I usually tend to do it, change mine every eight hours instead of 12 for that reason, but I have not had a problem with it. Brandy says, I have had mine for years and my period has gotten a lot heavier since I had children and I'm getting older. Yep. I just have had to empty it more often. Yeah, totally agreed. Um, there are also certain brands that um, are better for heavier flows, are better for post childbirth. If you choose to have a child, um, like four hours on every day. Oh my gosh, Brandy, that sucks. I'm sorry. Are you using, which brand are you using, Brandy? <laughs> Good times of the day. Keeper. Oh, I haven't heard Keeper. I'm curious if, um, if there's another one that would help with a heavier flow like that. Interesting. Oh, God, every four hours it sucks. I'm sorry. Man, tampons must have been even worse. Jeez. <laughs> oh, childbirth is a, is a fun thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> or I should say post-childbirth. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so you have dug your cat hole, washed your hands, um, you take it out, pour it, at, uh, pour it into your cat hole, and then do, 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 um, use your toilet paper if you're using that, and then you're just going to clean your cup like you would normally. Um, for those who don't use a cup, you just wash it with soap and water. Um, the cup instructions say this, but remember to use the soap that's free of any fragrance or harsh chemicals. That's because of like the pH balance of your vagina is really sensitive. Um, so like using just any old soap is like not gonna be a good time for your vagina. Um, Dr. Bronner's is a great option or you can use something like um, Unscented Summer's Eve um, and just pack it in a reusable bottle. Once everything is clean, insert it again, and wash your hands and cover up your cat hole. Um, since a few of you haven't used a menstrual cup before, let me just show you. It is definitely a bit of a learning curve. I'm a newer, um, I'm newer to using them, honestly. My sister had tried to convince me for years. And I was like, whatever, like I'll get to it at some point. I finally did. And it's like been life changing. Um, <laughs> but I would recommend practicing for a minimum of three cycles at home before you ever use it on the trail. So if you have a backpacking trip like next week and you've never used one before, I would not recommend starting while you're out there. Um, 
because it's it's I'll never go back. I have a Mil Miluna. I've also heard, heard really good things about Milunas. That's really awesome. Um, so yeah. Anyway, the important thing is to relax <laughs> and remember that you are going to get it in or out. Um, if you're like me and you start to panic, then it's going to be much harder. So like literally do that nice diaphragmatic breathing, <laughs> calm yourself down a little bit. Um, a cup is not going to migrate into your uterus. So remind yourself of this and don't get nervous. Um, so, okay. So to insert it, you're going to, there's a bunch of different folds. There's something called like the C fold um, like this, or you can do the punch down mold where you, uh, I'm not showing this very well, punch it down and like kind of create almost like a V um, to insert it into your vagina. And then once it's in your vagina, releasing it and twisting it. And then to get it out, actually Diva Club today just came out with a nice um, video of that on their Instagram account. Instead of pulling on the stem, um, that's not going to break the suction um, that you've created, which is why it doesn't leak. So you'll have to actually go into your vagina, press on that side to break that suction. And then you can pinch the bottom here and pull it out. To, it's again, it's definitely a learning curve. Um, and it sounds like it's frightening, at least it did to me. <laughs> um, but once you try it and you realize like, oh, I'm like not leaking everywhere and like I can sleep and not have to worry about like toxic toxic shock syndrome um, with a tampon. Cause like you can't wear tampons to bed. Guess what? You can wear a menstrual cup to bed. It's great. Um, something interesting I had heard is that the average woman spends about $13 a month for one-time use menstrual products, which adds up really quickly. Um, whereas a menstrual cup can last you up to 10 years if you care for it properly. And it costs between 20 and $40. So if your health allows it, I think it's definitely worth looking into and giving it a try. Um, but if you're not ready for it, don't stress about it. I just think it's important that people know that it is, is an option out there. Um, something someone else in the last class had also mentioned in terms of like getting it out, if you're having a hard time, um, bearing down as though you're going to like poop kind of helps move the cup, um, towards the, um, the exit of your cervix. Um, and I finally got a chance to try and it works so much easier. Oh my gosh. Um, is there any, for those of you who use cups and discs, um, do you have any thoughts about using it or like any advice for those who are maybe hesitant or haven't used it before? I have never tried that technique, thanks. <laughs> and last class, Lifesaver, whatever that one was, I was just like, ah, yes, so much easier now. Uh, they come in different sizes. So you can start with a smaller one, if you're intimidated, that's a really good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the resources page, I've actually included a link to, um, to like a menstrual cup quiz. So you can take it and see which brand or type might be the best one for you. Oh, Brandy says, I take mine out in the shower. Not so much for backpacking, right? But for starting to use, try inserting it while, while you are in the shower. Absolutely. Um, getting it wet in any capacity, like <laughs> so much kinder in your vagina, honestly. It just isn't going to create that friction um, if it's a little bit lubed up. Um, so I guess if you're backpacking, just pouring some water on it first would work really well like the shower Brandy suggested agree with that technique. Sometimes mine leaks because I haven't inserted it properly. Yeah. I find it helpful to move my finger around the entire rim to make sure it can suction properly. That's a good idea. Yeah. And again, if you are new to it and you're practicing, I would recommend maybe wearing a liner um, the first few times just to make sure that you are um, sealing it properly. And if you're not, it's not leaking into your underwear. Um, okay, enough about uh, menstrual cups, even though I could talk for hours about it. Um, 
other options, you can use traditional tampons or pads. You're going to use the same method you would use with a cup. So dig your cat hole, wash your hands, wipe, insert that new tampon or put a new pad on. Um, but you will need to properly store your used items in a bag to be packed out. So a Ziploc bag works, uh, which is what I did before I made the switch to a cup or a reusable bag of some kind, like a stash or sandwich bag or whatever. Um, someone in the last class had mentioned she brings like a, a plastic bo a water bottle and then puts tape around it. So it like kind of like a privacy screen and then puts her used tampons in there and seals it up. I thought that was ingenious. Oh, Tara says, I use the Diva cup, but I am unsure I would use it backpacking relative to being able to properly wash my hands. Yeah, I, um, I find tampons to be less handsy. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I think that's, yeah, that's why I would definitely opt for soap and water as opposed to hand sanitizer for that exact reason, Tara. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't, you don't want messy or dirty hands up there. Um, okay, so store yeah you have to pack out your tampons and pads this is a really great method if this is what you're comfortable with already um but a bit of a challenge with regards to packing it out and making room in your bag um so does anyone here use tampons or pads in the back country and have all additional tricks i really liked the water bottle trick i used to use a ziploc bag that covered with duct tape <laughs> That's so awesome. Uh, then all of my tampons and pads can go in there and nothing looks messy from the outside. Yeah. The ingenious use of duct tape, I love it. Anyone else with the tampons and pads? Okay. All right. Uh, another option you can use is period underwear. It's, I think it's relatively newer um, invention. But basically they're, uh, oh, Charlie says, I did the same, but I'm hoping my IUD will make it obsolete this year. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Charlie, can I just really beg that you still bring some backups just in case for whatever reason you have some like spotting or something. That's my, okay, good. <laughs> I'll talk a little bit more about that too in just a moment, but oh, good. That, that is definitely another option. Um, so the period underwear, the more the really heavy absorbent ones can actually carry up to five tampons worth of blood, which like blows my mind. Um, wouldn't work if you had to change your uh, cup four times a day, but <laughs> it definitely would be an option for people who um, have maybe lighter periods. Um, if you're <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> if you're using a P rag, you can actually just pee like you normally would until you want to change your underwear at the end of the day. Um, so if you're using toilet paper or when you're ready to change your underwear, you're going to dig your cat hole, wash your hands again with soap and water. Um, then you're going to wipe and deposit the toilet paper properly into the hole. Then you'll take off your soiled underwear and put on a new pair. Then you're gonna wash the used underwear really thoroughly and hang it on a rock or a tree to dry or even on your backpack. Um, if you're going to use period underwear, I really recommend you, you need a minimum of two pairs, obviously, so you can keep one like on and then dry the other pair at the same time. Um, I would personally recommend bringing at least three or four. Um, if anyone's used these before, they take kind of a long time to dry. Um, Another thing to note, I personally have a hard time with chafing while wearing these. Um, something about like how absorbent they are makes everything really dry down there for me. And I've had some um, challenges with that. So, um, so just like with menstrual cups, please try this before you go out to the backcountry and see if it's a good option for you. Um, I started practicing with them at home and realized it wasn't for me in the backcountry, but um, I'm very glad that I gave it a try because I thought it would be kind of a cool option. Uh, the last method that I'm going to talk about, which Charlie was touching on, um, is birth control. So you can use birth control continuously um, so that you don't have a period, either like you know, hormonal pills or um, IUD, IUDs. 
Um, I would not recommend this to anyone without consulting a doctor first, of course. Um, or if you're over the age of 30, um, hormonal birth control can have other health impacts. So it can increase blood clot, your risk of blood clots. Um, so do consider this one carefully, but I did this for a number of years and it worked great. In hindsight, knowing what I know now about the impacts of the hormones it had on my body, um, I would have opted for something else, but I know plenty of people who don't have any um, imbalances in their bodies using this method. So do what is best for you. One other thing to note about the birth control method, you still need to have a backup. <laughs> like I was just saying with Charlie, um, I can't stress how frequently I hear people going into the back country um, who haven't had a period for a year, but again, all that physical exertion, all of a sudden they're spotting and they don't have anything to um, catch the blood. So bring a, bring a backup if you're gonna do this. Um, a few more items you can keep for your period um, pain reliever like Midol or ibuprofen, just in case. I keep this in my first aid kit, but you can stick it straight in your feminine hygiene kit if that makes more sense for you. Um, also a Nalgene water bottle is pretty fantastic. So you can, when you're at your camp, you can put hot water in it and just put it right on your abdomen and use it as like a heat pack to help with um, cramps. Um, all right, this is all I have about periods. So I would love to stop for a moment and open up the floor to any questions you might have about it before I move on, um, even before the Q and A, because I think this is um, a topic that just isn't talked about very often. So does anyone, have either questions or even just like comments about their experiences um, with their period in the back country and like maybe what were some of the challenges or what were some of the like methods you use that were pretty rock solid. I, my, it's not me, um, but I'm loving this session, by the way. So thank you. Um, but I have uh, my daughter. We went to a cottage that has no running water, no electricity. It, it's in the middle of nowhere. We kind of live in the middle of nowhere, but it's really in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So not really backpacking, but um, we got there and she started complaining about her stomach not feeling well. And I thought, so after dinner, she comes back from the outhouse and says, mommy, I'm bleeding. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and so first period in the back country well we 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 were in the back country <laughs> we were still in a cottage we still had lake water and we had a stove that we could heat things up on easily yeah. enough but um I have to say I was so proud of her like what a trooper mm -hmm. um but she we ended up having because there was no pads there we normally always have sort of backup ones but mm -hmm. some of us have used them so we had to use so you know worst comes to worst we used um dish uh, uh, face cloths and so we rotated oh. I think we had two or three of them that we sort of rotated through um, yeah. and she and I was like oh it's gonna be really light it was not light oh my god poor kid <laughs> she's poor kid but anyways um, it was just like I guess what I'm saying is you know here's this kid <laughs> brand new to it if you ever get it when, when you're out and about <laughs> you know like you I just I was so impressed with her and and we just washed them and they dried really fast I was quite impressed with how quickly you know I like I kept washing them really frequently frequently so she would feel comfortable and then we would go for a rinse in the lake and everything um but yeah so that good, good on her and good on you mom because like that yeah, she was pretty that's awesome. rough it's yeah. really rough oh my gosh I'm sure she like <laughs> is going to be like was so prepared for anything else in her life when it comes to periods after that <laughs> that's, that's awesome thank you for sharing Brandy uh, Tara says, I wonder if you can speak more to hand washing in the wilderness and best practices with that. Okay. So again, I'm a little anal when it comes to hygiene, just because I've had some weird things happen to me in the past. Um, but I think the pandemic has also kind of heightened people's awareness of like the importance of um, hand washing. So when you're in the back country, soap and water, but not into a stream, like doing it away from a stream and really just, you know, using the fingernails to scratch on your hands so you're getting underneath those fingernails, just how you would wash it at a home, basically. I use filtered water from my water bottle. 
um, which I don't think necessarily everyone does. Um, like I would never just dump my hands into a river, A, because the soap should never be going into the river. And we'll be talking about that in a little bit too. Um, but B, because it's not filtered. And like the chances of like microorganisms getting into my vagina just from like my hands are probably slim. It's not like I'm ingesting it, but I prefer to play it safe than sorry um, when I'm like, you know, 20 miles from <laughs> civilization. Um, so that's just kind of my two cents on that. I don't know if anyone else has other thoughts about how they kind of manage keeping their hands clean when they're dealing with their periods or, um, yeah. Okay, I'll let that one sit for a little bit. So if you guys have any more questions, please keep asking and I'll always step, oh yeah, I do my drinking water in a squeeze bottle. Walk somewhere where I can dispose of gray water. Awesome. Uh, rinse and wash with my backpacking soap. Dry with a clean towel. Yeah, absolutely. Wash. Leave it for a few more moments. Referring to wash my hands. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So we've talked poop, pee, periods. There's also just general bathing that sometimes we just don't think about um, and different people feel differently about it. I know some people are like, I'm going into the back country. I'm not going to like do anything with my body. I don't care if I smell totally cool. There are some people are like, I really don't like to stink. I want to do something in the back country. Also totally cool. So we're going to touch base on that. Um, so like we were just talking about, while well, you can swim in lakes and rivers, it is best pack practice to do your actual washing away from any water sources to pre prevent from contaminating it. Um, it's not just the soap that can contaminate the waters, like your sunscreen, bug spray, um, just general body stuff. Like if you were, you know, had lotion on from days ago and it hasn't come off yet, um, that could really contaminate that water. And since Typically we're thinking about lakes that are not moving. Um, it's going to affect it more than like a river, if that makes sense. Still shouldn't in a river, but standing water is at higher risk of being contaminated. Um, so I walk 200 feet away. And then I like to like wash my face and hands and other body parts um, with a buff or a bandana or even a cool cloth, but not the one that I'm using to wipe my vagina with because that's gross. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but have like two Kula gloves. Um, but so I do my washing and then later on I jump into a body of water. Um, so without any soap or like all of that extra, those chemicals or whatever else is on my body. Um, the benefit of swimming, if, if it's an option where you're um, backpacking, is that it also keeps your hair from getting too oily. So if you're trying to manage your hair, that's a really great option. Um, if you want, there are things like pocket showers, uh, which are mini packable showers that I haven't personally used, but I've heard are pretty cool. Um, so you just fill it up with water and you can like hang it from a tree and it's almost like a little, a little shower in the wilderness. Pretty cool. Um, a microfiber pack towel is also really great, uh, for drying off if you have space. Um, they're so, they make them so small now that <laughs> you almost will always have space, but it's a matter of whether you want to carry that extra weight. I know some people who like are hardcore people and really want to have like every quarter of an ounce accounted for. Um, I don't care as much, but uh, da, da, da. in lieu of washing yourself with a buffer bandana, you can also use wet wipes, which are an option. Just remember that you have to pack those out as well. Um, even if they say they're decomposable, mm, not, not in the wilderness, <laughs> really not anywhere. Like <laughs> you can't flush them down a toilet. Not really. Um, they're decomposable in the sense that like in a landfill, they will eventually decompose, but, um, they take quite a, quite a long time. Uh, if you are really uncomfortable with oily, greasy hair or your own BO, you are welcome to use unscented baby powder or deodorant, whatever makes you feel most comfortable. I find that bathing and swimming usually takes care of all of that, but everybody's body is different and you may not always have access to a body of water. So um, again, please note that animals are attracted to perfumed scents. So if you use these items, please make sure that they are unscented. Um, going back, someone had asked about bears 
Um, now I'm just realizing this bears and um, periods. Bears are, I've never, ever, ever heard that bears are attracted to period blood. Um, so if anyone has heard to the contrary, I'm fairly certain that is a myth. <laughs> um, otherwise I would have been uh, attracting bears for many, many years, but um, they're more interested in food items, not blood. They're not, they're not like sharks where it's like, you know, they smell the drop of blood in the ocean and whoa. Um, bears just, they're not blood seekers in that way. They're food seekers. Um, there's a question here. Do, 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 do. You can, oh, sorry. The chat's a little funky for me. Uh, Cynthia says, you can let wet wipes dry out and re and re-wet them when you want to use them. Cynthia, that is brilliant. Someone did a study baiting black bears with used tampons and the bears were not interested in them at all. Thank you for giving actual evidence for that. Yes. <laughs> yes, correct. Um, so if you're worried about that at all, I wouldn't be. Um, however, if you if you have a uh, cliff bar in your bag, that will bring them. Um, so remember to put those away. Um, lotion. Hands, if they get cracked really easily, bring some unscented lotion. There's like no reason not to. Um, also lip sunscreen is so important, so often forgotten. Um, yeah, I just know a lot of people who get sunburned lips specifically. So it's, you know, you can get really lightweight sunscreen for your lips and it's easy to stick in anywhere. Uh, okay, let's talk hair care briefly. Let's see here, oops. Uh, okay, so there is no, there's no right way to take care of your hair, of course, um, but braids seem to be a really easy go-to for a lot of women, regardless of their hair type. So if you're worried about, um, it getting knotted or like having a hard time just taking care of it, that's a really easy go-to. Um, I know for me personally, I find that leaving my hair down like this, I just like it so many knots. <laughs> um, but I know some women who like have this beautiful flowing hair and it's just like their jam and they look like they had just gone to a salon. I'm just like, how does that work? So whatever your hair type is, um, go with that. But uh Bringing a really small comb or a brush is really helpful. You can have one that's really lightweight and compact. Um, Nadia Mercado wrote a really great piece about how to manage curly hair for women of a range of different ethnic back backgrounds, uh, which is also included in the resource page. So if it would be helpful for you to see someone who has hair similar to you, there she interviewed a bunch of different women. So um, take a look at that. Uh, for dental care, there's a bit of a process. Uh, Lindsay, I think you're gonna laugh at me doing my demonstration again. Okay, so just like when you dig a cat hole, <laughs> um, you're gonna, let me turn on my light real quick so you can see the full experience. Okay, so just like when you're digging your cat hole, you're gonna, <coughs> excuse me, um, you're gonna start by walking 200 feet away from your campsite and any trails or water sources. Then you're gonna do something called the eco spray. Uh, and it looks like you're shooting your toothpaste out of a whale's blowhole. And it helps just spread all that love and reduce the concentration into just one area. Um, and it looks like this. So, <laughs> it, <laughs> like purse your lips together. <laughs> just, Give it a give it a whirl. Um, something I would recommend practicing <laughs> before you get out there. Um, if you're with people that you don't want to look silly around, um, or just embrace the silliness and and look like I did just now. It's it's totally fine. Um, <laughs> so if you want to get really intense about weight, you can cut off the handle of your toothbrush, or just find a really nice travel size one that's already small and like has a nice case cover on it. Um, like with soap, I really, really, really encourage you to use a more environmentally friendly toothpaste, um, like Dr. Bronner's or even toothpaste tablets where you can swallow them um, as they're going to leave less of an impact on the environment uh, that you're spraying on. 
So with regards to underwear real quick, and I'm not talking about period underwear, just like your regular underwear, because we don't think about that always. Um, merino wool is a really great option um, because it draws moisture away from your body and it dries really quickly if you want to wash it. So I find this is like a really great way to prevent chafing again, um, along with a quick trail bath. Um, you can absolutely wear any kind of underwear you have, but personally, it's it's one of my favorite upgrades since, you know, TMI, I get a little bit of a SWAS situation going on. Um, I also read recently, you know, a lot of people are talking about like cotton kills, cotton kills, cotton kills. And like, it's just a comfort thing. Like the only time cotton really kills is when you are in a cold environment and you're um, at risk of hypothermia. So if you're comfortable with a sweaty butt, go with what you have, go with the cotton. It's like not a problem. It's really in the summer. It's just a comfort thing. If it's winter, I would really seriously consider, um, Marina Wilmer more carefully, um, just to prevent you from getting cold. Um, but da, 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 da. if you want, you are more than welcome to shave on the trail. Um, again, with biodegradable soap, please, but it's usually easier to wait until you're done with your trip, or if you're doing a longer one, just going through a town, uh, quickly do it there. Excuse me. Uh, Ziploc bags or reusable bags are essential if you're packing out toilet paper and tampons and pads. So just remember those. Um, your eyewear. So if you wear contacts or glasses, uh, make sure you wash your hands really well again um, before you touch your eyes because nothing's worse than an eye infection while you're in the backcountry. Um, Again, using soap and water instead of the hand sanitizer. A quick note about trail laundry, just like when you're washing yourself, make sure you wash your clothes away from water sources. Um, simply just wet your clothes from your water bottle, add some soap, rub, scrin uh, scrub, rinse, and then hang dry on your pack or like a rock or something like that. Uh, last thing, your feet. So to prevent trench foot and blisters, let your feet air out each day, um, either while you're taking a break for lunch or in the evenings, preferably both. I also recommend wearing merino wool socks, again, because it draws moisture away. Um, that's like the one body, body part where cotton maybe does kill. So I retract my former statement. <laughs> really uncomfortable feet is just like ruins a trip. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, rotate out your socks too to let them air dry. So I bring a minimum of two socks on a trip, one that I wear and then one that I keep in my pack so that I can just switch them out um, and then give them a good wash. Okay, so this might have been a lot of information. Uh, I'd like to pull again real quick and see where you're at now and then jump into the Q&A session before we announce our giveaway winner. So um, let's pull up that poll. Also, thank you all for being here. Um, let's see here. Okay. Here we go. Thank you. Uh, so I feel confident in how to use my uh, gear for backcountry hygiene. One, definitely I could go into the wilderness this weekend and feel totally confident. Two, emerging confidence. I learned some new strategies tonight that I'm looking forward to implementing. Three, still not there yet, but I hope to be someday. Okay, uh, all results are in. Definitely, okay. There we go. So we've got a lot of you who are feeling pretty comfortable, a lot of you who are really getting there and uh, maybe just need to actually do it and uh, get your feet wet, so to speak. And a few of you who are still, still not 100% sure that you're ready for it, but I can't wait until you are. All right, question number two. I I plan on going into the back country while having my period. Um, doo -doo -doo. I'm having my period. One, I've already done it and we'll do it again. Two, I haven't done it yet, but I feel prepared. Three, still not ready yet. And that's totally fine. Okay. 
Okay, and the poll results in. Do, do, do. All right. Okay. For those of you who are not ready yet, you are so welcome to like reach out to me either. Um, here, I'm going to type in my. Okay. It'd be helpful if I didn't make it all caps locks. Okay, sisters. Okay. Feel free to email me and ask any questions that maybe you didn't feel comfortable asking here um, or just didn't even think about asking yet. Um, but uh, I want to get you there someday. That'd be awesome. Um, and then question number three. I plan to use the following menstruation management um, next time I'm in the backcountry. Tampons or pads, menstrual cup or disc, period underwear, birth control, so I don't have a period or something else. Okay, thank everybody who is, here we go. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So it looks like we're, we have a, ni a nice spread. That's really cool. Very, very cool. Thank you ladies for uh, sharing that with me. Um, I would love to open up a Q and A session right now. If you have any questions or comments or again, things that you want to share that work for you, because this is, <laughs> Clearly, I've, I've learned some really cool new things from you all tonight, and I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, while people are thinking, uh, do, 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 do. okay, these are some online resources for all of you. Um, there's, and then uh, Lindsay, could you send this out to them again? I'm sorry. If yeah, Thank nope, you so absolutely. We'll send out this and then um, a link to the recording to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this is the feminine hygiene checklist that I made. Um, again, I'm such a visual person. I will always forget stuff unless it's like written down. Uh, the Leave No Trace website is great. Um, they have all kinds of fun um, resources and just a lot of information about kind of new practices um, as we learn more. And then here's the menstrual cup quiz uh, for anyone who's interested in finding a cup that's right for their body and that uh, curly hair management thing I was talking about before. Okay. Oh, it has been super and lots of new items that I really didn't think of before. No conscious, no, i.e. no conscious of them. So thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just a little background, the first time I was in the backcountry on my period, I was 19, and I was a group with a group of eight men. Um, obviously, none of them knew how to do it, and I had talked to somebody in the field um, about what I should do if I was on my period, and they just told me, like, I shouldn't go. And I was like, well, F that. So it was a really unpleasant experience. I had no idea what I was doing and like I just did it all wrong. So I'm really excited to hopefully prevent that experience from anyone else. <laughs> um, thank you. My menstrual cup backcountry hilarious moments are over. <laughs> I'm so curious now what happened previously. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Really, really huge thanks again uh, to Lindsay and to all the ladies um, at Women Who Explore. They're just like, they're amazing. They really are. Oh. They, they think so much about like all of you and like what would benefit their amazing community and just like support women and women businesses. So I'm extremely grateful. Um, military here, feeling more confident about heading into the field. Oh man. Yeah, good on you. Okay, Dean, thank you. Gosh, thank you for your service. 
Molly, this was super helpful. I've never backpacked and I'm only a newer hiker. Yay, within the last few years. That's awesome. That is cool. uh, everything I have learned before was from my husband, but obviously he can't <laughs> help us certain parts of being in the outdoors. So thank you, <laughs> absolutely. Oh gosh. <laughs> Amy, now that I'm thinking about it, a feminine urinary device, if you're like in concentrated areas might be a really good option for you, FYI. Um, that's like a scenario in which like, I feel like would be really frustrating, um, but that could kind of eliminate some of that. Um, but anyway, okay. Shall we do the giveaway? Yeah, let's do it. Um... Amy. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm gonna put it on full screen. Okay, I'm ready. Um, you can pick a number one through, what do we got? 17. Eight. <laughs> Oops. Melanie. Yay, Melanie. Congrats, Melanie. <laughs> Yay! I'm excited. Yeah, I want one. Um, I I actually so my friend is on here, Melissa, and we're hiking part of the PCT this summer. So I'm excited um, to know all of these things. And now I have a buddy who knows them as well. So uh, cool. Well, thanks so much, Shannon, and thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Um, like I said, I'll send out an email with all the like links and stuff, and if if you guys do need anything, Shannon is always there to answer questions. So, and actually, Melanie, if you could send me your, um, I put my email address in there earlier. Hold on, I'll send it again. Um, but if you can send me your email and contact information, um, I can. Customer service, uh, not Gmail. Oh, gosh, at Alpine Sisters. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, customer service. Um, that way I can get your stuff sent to you. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you all. Thanks, Shannon, for everything. Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. Blessing us with your knowledge. <laughs> Have a nice evening.